Well, good morning, church. Good morning to those of you who are online this morning. It's great to have you. Great to have you tuning in. Let's pray. Father, we want to tune into you. We want to see your works, God. We want to see our hands doing your works with your power, Lord. But it does take willingness, Lord. So I pray that in this new year, which which isn't new to you, Lord. Your mercies are new every day. We thank you for that, God. But for us, it's a good time to be able to kind of set aside things and maybe pick up better things, better habits, better things that we can do, Lord. God, we thank you that you are good. Father, we want to lift your name up this morning, Lord, and every day, God. We're going to start with this one this morning. The name of Jesus lifted high. We've done this one a bit. We're going to do it. So sing loud because he's worthy. Amen? All right. drink from oh he is my song let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide the ransom for my life oh he 
is my song, and you are good. You're good. gonna let me down you're never gonna let you're never gonna let me down you're never gonna let you're never gonna let me down you're never gonna let you're never gonna let me down you're never gonna let Never gonna.
sing this chorus. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. How great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, and all oh, will see how great, how great is our God, name above all names. us, God. Your word says, do not test the Lord, your God. But we see you work, Lord. We see it. We don't need to test you, Lord, when we see your glory all around, your works all around, God. <laughs> your word says that man is without excuse, that we plainly see you, Lord. you, Lord. I thank you, God, that you are good in every situation, even when it doesn't, it might not look good at the moment. But God, we thank you that we know that we can trust you, Lord. And we do, Lord. We need a renewed trust in you, Lord, for 2021. Can we put our trust in him? The answer is always yes. The question is, can we put our trust in him in 2021? The answer is always yes. Yes, yes, yes. Infinity times, yes. Let's sing this one more time. How great is our God. Oh, you're so great, Lord. And how great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Yes, Lord, we lift you up, the glorious one, the one who is good, and the one who is great. <laughs> Amen. Well, why don't you Turn around or turn to the left or right or whatever and greet someone. Tell them, hey, welcome them. And online, you know, you can wave. I don't know a pastor does something like, okay, at this point, wave or something like that. So, well, we can't see you, but we know you're there. So, awesome. Well, you guys can be seated. Just have a couple announcements. We are going to be 
starting, um, so uh, Crystal Harris is going to be starting a women's Bible study. Um, Mondays? Okay, Mondays, awesome. Um, I don't know who to go to for information for that, actually. Okay, Rhonda, great. Okay, awesome. So connect with Rhonda. Um, she's not here today. Um, Pastor and Rhonda went to Buffalo. Um, Pastor Tom's uh, father is ailing, so um, just kind of wanted to be there, visit him. So I'm really glad that they were able to make it out there. So, um, And then we also have men's Bible study um, starting next Thursday, not this Thursday. Oh, Chris, Trish Jaws, I'm sorry. So I have my in-ears in, so I'm going to take them out. Now I can hear you. Hi, everybody. Okay. Um, so we're going to be starting men's Bible study um, a week from Thursday. We are going to be doing Zoom. We are also going to be doing in person, but it's going to be in here. So plenty of space in here. Um, it just really works better, um, you know, to be able to have that accountability-wise, you know, face-to-face. -face. So, um, but we will be doing distancing. We'll be doing all that kind of stuff. So awesome. So um, Dr. Shannon Polk. Would you like to come up and give the message today? Thank you so much. Welcome. <laughs> I got all that stuff for you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Don't fall. Right. Um, sometimes I have to move things away to be able to read them. Um, good morning, everybody. Um, one other announcement, that is we will be having communion next Sunday. Um, hi, everybody online. Um, so if you want to come to the church to pick up the elements, you can. We are using the elements so that everything's properly sealed. I believe there's going to be some available um, as you exit the building today for you to pick up and take with you if you won't be here um, next Sunday, or if you're like me and you've been spending time in your house, um, you can always do what I'm going to do. I'm going to have my husband go buy some cranberry juice. We're going to get some saltines and go old school. But we will have, you will be able to take communion next Sunday. Amen? All righty. Um, Danielle and uh, Caleb, I apologize in advance that you don't have the scriptures, but roll with me. All right. So... The, hmm. Let me start here. Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to be together. We thank you, God, that you are a faithful God and that we can place our trust in you. So, Father, as I prepare to share this word, I pray that every word I say will come from you and be inspired by you, that it will go forth and do the thing that you desire for it to do, God. I yield myself to you as a vessel. Let everyone's attention be focused on the words that they hear that the Holy Spirit is saying to them. And may it plant a seed in their heart that the enemy cannot uproot and that they would bear much fruit for the kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So, oh, this is hard because I'm used to walking. Okay, so I have a friend who died from COVID yesterday. And it was very difficult because we're approximately the same age. She did a lot of work in the city. I have known her since we were probably 12 and 13 years old. And I was looking at my daughter, and she was asking me, you know, what was going on, and I said, well, honey, the woman that we prayed for, she passed away. And she looked at me, she said, wait, but we prayed for her. And I said, yes, baby, we did. And she said, well, did our prayers not work? And then, I said, no, no, God. She said, well, did God hear us? I said, no, he definitely heard us. She said, well, was he ignoring us? I said, no, he was not ignoring us. And she had a lot of questions about why God responded in the way that he did. And I looked at her, and in that moment, I realized I was emotionally ill-equipped to handle her. I said, your dad is going to explain it all to you when he comes back home. I said, he'll, I said, I'm good with preaching. He's going to give you a theology. She said, what is theologia? I said, see, that's why we're going to wait until daddy gets home. Now, let me take a step back. During my devotions yesterday, I was reading, and I try my best to read through the Bible every year. I fail 
miserably every year, but I try every year to read through the entire Bible. I think that's an important practice. And as I was going through that, I was struck by yesterday's devotion because in the devotion, it talked about questions, the first questions. The person who writes the devotion is an attorney, and I really appreciate his focus on questions because when you're in law school, you learn through what's called the Socratic method, where you're supposed to have done the readings and the professor will turn to you and go, here's my question to you. And it's just like it was in that old movie, The Paper Chase, and you stand there and sometimes you have the answers and sometimes you're like, dear God, give me something to say so I don't embarrass myself in front of my classmates. And in this particular devotion, he talked about the first questions. What's the first question that man asks of God? What's the first question that God asked of man? What are the first questions in the Old Testament and the New Testament? And I realized that one of the most interesting questions asked in the Old Testament, it's one of the first questions asked, was, this Satan, was Satan talking to Eve, the serpent talking to Eve? And he questioned her about what God had said. And as I thought about my daughter's questions and I thought about the questions in scripture, it came, something came to my mind. It's something that my husband always says. And it's actually a quote by A.W. Tozer, the famous preacher. And when I went to look up the quote, I realized that my husband had been quoting it wrong to me for the past 13 years. So I couldn't give you that exact quote. But I can give you his saying because I like his saying better. And he says, what you think about God is the most important thing you think about. How you perceive God is the most important thing that you do with your mind because how you understand God affects how you understand everything. How you see the world, how you see relationships, how you interact with strangers, how you interact with those that are infirm, how you deal with scripture, how you deal with hurts, how you deal with success. And what I realized in my daughter's question, and even in the question that the serpent asked Eve, the question really impacts how you see God. And it really becomes a question where you question the identity of God. You see, you can't believe in a God you don't trust. And all that we have experienced in 2020 made a lot of people question God. My daughter consistently asked me, she's like, well, if God is so strong, why doesn't he just get rid of COVID? Why doesn't he just stop racism? Why doesn't he just let all of that go? And I looked at her and I thought to myself, I could answer that question and put that in a book. Your tuition for college will be paid for indefinitely. I probably put a bunch of kids through college. I don't have the answer to that question. But what I do have is an answer that came to me when my mom passed away. And what came to me was this, God is sovereign and he is faithful. He is faithful. Now the reason why that is so critical is because if you don't believe that God is faithful, you won't trust him. And that will impact your relationship with him. If you don't believe that God is who he said he is, it will be hard for you to open up your Bible and spend time with him and build a relationship because you'll think he's not trustworthy. Because something will happen and it will question and knock against your faith and it will make you think that God is not who he claimed he is. So I looked and I thought to myself, I said, okay, God, so if we want to believe that you are faithful, do you say that about yourself? Is there some place in scripture where you speak to your faithfulness? Okay. Now, you all know I have a ton of notes. Let me see if I can get to where I want it to be. I got a lot of notes. Let's see here. Aha. I think I found my right page. Here we go. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 4 through 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 4 through 9. The writer here says this, I always thank my God for you because of his grace given you in Christ Jesus. For in him you have been enriched in every way with all kinds of speech, with all knowledge. Now let us move down to verse 8. He will keep you firm to the end so you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 9, God is faithful who has called you into fellowship with his son. Now, let's go a little bit, let's go to another verse. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 9. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 9 says, Know therefore 
that God, that the Lord your God is God. He is the faithful God, keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commandments. To a thousand generations. That's why when we look in scripture, it said he's the God of who? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He said he would extend his love to generations. It's not just for you. It's so that it impacts the entire kingdom so that through your line, through your faith, because of your prayers, entire generations would be blessed and carry forward that message of who God is. He is faithful. When I look over my own life and I think about the faith of my mother who prayed and who believed God through all kinds of circumstances, who prayed and believed God even when she was struggling with cancer and who would tell people, my God is good. It doesn't matter that I don't have hair right now. It doesn't matter that I'm dealing with this. Let me tell you how amazing my God is that when I was a single parent, God held us together, that I prayed and God showed up and he miraculously cared for us. I think about my grandmother, and I think about how she prayed, and she talked about how she raised two boys after being divorced, and how even though she never worked outside of the home, she said, my son serve God, and that is my greatest legacy. My grandmother would always say, I've never been to the drug house. I don't know about that. I never had to go to jail because I stayed on my knees. She said, and somehow in the city of Flint, God put his hands on those children. My father, who was the son of a pastor, he was with me, and I was with some friends, and we were praying. And he said, those prayers that you just prayed are reminiscent of the prayers my mother prayed that sent seven sons to Vietnam, and all of them came back. And not one of them died. You see, God is faithful. But he's not just faithful in the good times. He's faithful in the hard times. He's not just faithful when it's easy. He's faithful when it is challenging, when you don't know what to do. Let me, let me just go over here. Let's go to Daniel chapter 3. Now, we all know this one. If you didn't, you saw it in VeggieTales, Rack Shack and Benny, right? Okay, so let's talk about Rack Shack and Benny. And you all may know them as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So here they are. And they're about to be thrown in the fiery furnace because they will not bow to King Nebuchadnezzar. And I love, I love, I love what they say here in verse 16 of Daniel chapter 3. In Daniel chapter 3, verse 16, they reply to the king. And they say, King Nebuchadnezzar, we don't need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown in the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it. And he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, we're not going to serve your gods, worship the image of gold that you have set up. We are not going to do that. Why? Because we know that God is faithful, whether he delivers us or not. God is faithful. Now, here's what I want you to see in this story. Now, Nebuchadnezzar, verse 19, he's like, oh, so that's what you're going to do? Okay, I got some for that because I'm king. Let me just chuck you all into the flames. So that's what he does. And then he commands the furnace is seven times hotter than it normally would be. But what I love here is that if you look at what happens, it says in verse 23, these three men firmly tied fell into the furnace. But then Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet and he said, wait, hold on a second. I'm seeing something. I'm seeing something real crazy. Didn't I throw three men into the fire? And they said, yes. And he said, but look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed, and the fourth looks like the Son of God. Here's the thing. God is so faithful, but it's not because he's going to change your circumstances. It's because when you're in it, he stands right next to you so that you're never in the flame by yourself. He said, I will take the smoke with you. I will take the flame with you. I will stand right next to you through everything that you will deal with. See, we think that God's faithfulness means he just plucks us out of a situation, but God's faithfulness means he stands there and he holds us and he hugs us and he cares for us and he loves on us in the middle of our difficulty. So as we start the year of 2021, I cannot tell you that this is your, I'm not going to falsely prophesy, God said you're going to have everything that you've ever prayed for. That would be a lie. (laughs) I'm not going to do what so many people did in 2020 and say, this is the year of vision. Did nobody see COVID coming? I want to know what vision they was talking about. Nobody gave a word that we were all going to be in our house and wearing masks. Nobody said I was going to go to the bank looking like a robber trying to cash a check. (laughs) Nobody said any of that. But here's what I can say. Because it's been true 
since before I was born, that no matter what you face this year, God is faithful and he will be with you. He will be with you. You can stand on that. That is worth more than Bitcoin and any other currency that could come into your hands. God is faithful. In Deuteronomy, the name of God there is El Imunah. It means the faithful God. We know so many of the names of God, and it's so beautiful that he describes himself in this way. I grew up listening to Kenneth Copeland. And I remember a sermon that Kenneth Copeland gave when I was probably about seven or eight years old. I remember watching it. And he said, you all, it's so important you understand something. God knew that you couldn't be faithful. He knew that because of your flesh, because we live in a fallen world, you couldn't be faithful. So what he says here in scripture is that when he could swear by no other, he swore by himself. He cut a covenant with himself so that he to say, No, even if you are unfaithful, I will stay faithful to the fact that I will watch over you. I will care for you. I am there with you. Here's the thing. We don't have faith because we're so faithful. We have faith in him because he is so faithful. He is faithful. I don't know about you, but as I said when I started out this message, every year I try to read through the Bible. (laughs) Every year. And every year, somewhere around June, I'm like, ooh, boy, let me try this again. And then next thing I know about October, I look up, and I'm like, oh, my goodness, I'm 60 days behind. It's not that I've been reading scriptures, that I haven't been following my plan. Same thing happened with my diet. (laughs) Same thing happened with my exercise. (laughs) Somehow I was up and down, up and down. I saw five pounds go. I saw seven pounds come back. Here's the thing. Even when I'm inconsistent, God is consistent. Even when I have let people down, even when I haven't kept my word, God has always kept his word. His word that he loves us. His word that he cares for us. And because he cared for us so much, we know that he's faithful. Why? Because when he saw that we were unable to keep the law, he sent his son. He said, I know you can't do this on your own, so I will come and take on the form of human flesh. Just like we saw the Son of God in the fire with the three Hebrew boys, we see Jesus hanging on a cross, looking at two thieves and to one. He says, don't worry about it. Just like you're hanging here, I'm hanging here too. I am hanging here too. You see, no matter where you find yourself, God is with you. That's why we call his name Emmanuel, and he is faithful. That's why he's El Imunah. Now, here's the thing you need to understand. God is faithful, and he will never suffer us to be tempted above what we can bear. He will never put more on you than what you are able to hold up under. And he is faithful to establish you and keep you. And he is faithful to keep his promises. He is faithful that promised. I just want to read a couple other scriptures to you that I feel are so critical. Hebrews 10, chapter 23. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. He is faithful. Now, you have to understand, when the enemy comes and he tries to bring up the questions and he points to the circumstances in your life, you have to be rooted and grounded in knowing the character of God. My challenge to you this year is that you would begin to look for the scriptures that speak to God's character in the situations you are facing so that when the enemy tries to tell you that God is not who he says he is, you put him in remembrance of the word of God that says exactly the character of God. And I don't care if you put that on a three by five card in your home or whether or not you put that in the journal that you pray from, wherever you put that, be reminded of who God is. Stay reminded of who God is because you can trust him to honor his word. There's a story 
and I thought it was a very interesting illustration. It goes like this. Two young girls were talking, and one of them said that she had 10 pennies. The other girl looked in her hand and said, I only see five. She said, you're lying. You only have five pennies. But the first girl replied, I have five pennies, and my father told me he'd give me five more tonight. That means I have 10 pennies. How many of us trust God that way? How many of us trust that even when the promise is not directly in our hands, that he is faithful to do exactly what he said he would? He is faithful. As I prayed about this, I said, God, what is it that you want your people to be reminded of? He said, tell them, don't be deterred by what they see, for we don't walk by faith. We don't walk by sight, we walk by faith. And to remember, no matter what they see in this year, to remind them that I am faithful, not just for a moment, not just in a season, but over a lifetime. And if you look back over your life, you may have taken some losses. You may not look quite like the lion's losses, but you may have taken a couple of L's. But here's the thing. If you look back over your life, there are probably more W's than there are L's because God is faithful. It may not have been perfect. It may not have been everything that you wanted, but God met your needs. He supplied you with hope. And because he is faithful to his word, you can trust him. You can trust him with your heart. You can trust him with your soul. You can trust him with your family. You can trust him with your finances. You can trust him with everything that concerns you. You can cast your cares on him because he cares for you. Yes. He is faithful. The Bible says that he's not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Does he not speak and then not act? Does he not promise and not fulfill? God is faithful. If we could stand and close, please. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you that because in your word it says, it is because of your great love that we are not consumed, for your compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. God, we thank you that as we start this year, that we know that no matter what comes, no matter what goes, our God, our God stands. You are El Emunah, the God who is faithful. And that we will not be deterred by what we see. We won't be deterred by what we experience, God. But we are going to put our entire faith and trust in you. We will yield this year to you. We will lay it at your feet and say, God, whatever you want to occur this year, I am yielded and surrendered to you. I place all of my faith and all of my trust and everything inside of me at your feet. And if you can do anything with it, God, I am here and I am surrendered. So, Father, as we leave this place but not your presence, it is our prayer that you would watch over us, that you would guide us, that you would speak to us in a still, small voice, that you would minister to us as we come and we go. God, that our yielded life would produce much fruit, that we would share and tell others of your faithfulness throughout this year, God. Hmm. Father, we thank and we bless you. We lift up your name, for you truly are the most high. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I would encourage, amen, I would encourage each of you to get a gratitude jar this year where you can begin to write things down where God has been faithful. And then at the end of 2021, you can open that up, read it, and look back on all the things that God has done. Because I believe you will see his faithfulness to you throughout this year. Amen. Be blessed. Go with God. For those of you that are online, we just want to say that we bless you and we love you. And if you have any prayers, there are people online that are willing to pray with you. Be blessed today. Amen.